Well, <laughs> ironically enough, the 26th of July, we're doing this all over again. Uh, apparently, uh, when you forget your days, that's what happens. You can live, two, you can live the same day twice. If you thought another day with the 26th, and well, today is actually the 26th. So. It's about uh, 17 hours into the day. Heading off to my parents. Lila was off today. I found as I was uh, sort of perusing around and seeing what else was out there because Lionel didn't have his usual show. And I just followed one of the suggestions to see what it was. And it was a lecture by the Democrats uh, in California. They have these clubs apparently. Describing how Putin, how Trump was a puppet of Putin and talking about the Miller investigation, the Mueller investigation. And I think the whole thing was a complete crock. It was, it was, it was done by a petty officer of the CIA who knows and this is how they were trained and <laughs> it was complete bullshit. And at the time there's a whole crowd of people uh, and he congratulated them and not being children and they were in a room with adults having an adult conversation and they bought it they bought everything hook line and sinker. Well where are we now? The Mueller report was completely uh, was uh, showed there was no collusion, there was no sort of uh, Russian interference with the other thing. But again, they're still trotting that out. They're still uh, running that idea, and they're still getting traction. Russian hacking, Russian spies, Chinese hacking, uh, Chinese spies. There was a TV show when I was younger uh, called Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. And there was this neighbor who was a, uh, a loyal American, you know, gung-ho American type of thing, who was always spying on his neighbors make sure they weren't up to anything nefarious. And this is what's happening now, is that this mentality of paranoia. Now this is, 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 is we're talking about the right now. The right have, are, are, are as paranoid as the left are. So when you talk about trying to sort of figure out where we're going, where we're thinking, you know, what's happening to society, well this is this is what paranoia is. Of course, most of the uh, the right have completely sold out. So they have no more morality anymore. They've become as generic as the left are. Well, what happens is that a large chunk of the left are generic. They don't believe in anything. But some are downright evil. And they love, they'll, they'll push things and they'll be able to get away with it because everybody else is generic. That, that, you know. How how are the, the how is the left and they are the left? How is the left How is the left winning all the time? Simple because there aren't enough people who have anything that's genuine to stand up for anything that's significant. Everything is generic. And when everything is generic, there's nothing to stand up for. situation, this is what postmodernism is, and this is sort of written about by Joski S. It was written about um, by uh, Voltaire. That's actually what was going on. 
So it was predicted. It is no one would believe that this would be the end. And so now it's an issue of convincing people that there is there's actually more. What happens if you look at you have to go back and look at history. And when you're looking at history, you look for parallels. And what happens is that typically people, it's always the young, they get them riled up enough to believe these things. They're, they're indoctrinated. And this is sort of, they become, they're, they're, they're the nihilists who believe in the lovey-dovey universe. But then when reality hits home, they grow up, they're, out of, they're, 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 they're no longer within their parents' trust funds. In other words, the trust fund runs out. This is when they wake up and become more realists and uh, they want the goodies that they had when they were younger. In other words, most of your woke people, the woke crowd, are nothing more than spoiled brats. They're wealthy, they've got nothing else to do. So, hey, here's your party. We're going to do something, well, significant, or what we call significant. on today and the other thing is, is that the hard part is is everything I'm talking about which is rather complex has to be boiled down to a, uh, a uh, 30 second or less uh, Instagram uh, Instagram uh, post <laughs> and it, it, it does take a bit of doing but it is doable Where the, the, uh, the gameplay Lord's Mobile comes into point into play so to speak, is that you can use Lord's Mobile as a simulator because it takes a long time to get anything done in Lord's Mobile, and you have to think about not short-term strategy, which most of your POV games, are, you know, point of view games are point and shoot their immediate uh, strategy immediate thoughts. There is no real long-term uh, battle plan, if you will. There's no long-term strategy. It's all within the immediate. Where the games like Lord's Mobile, you have to think long-term, you have to think strategic. And you have to make choices. And what happens, a lot of people typically in these games want to view it as a war game. And so they spend their money on 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 most of the war material on the war materials and on soldiers. But what happens is taking that approach doesn't leave them alive for too long. Most people. end up running out of money and because they do everything on their credit card. They run out of money, they max out their credit card and their council is now dead. They've lost. In other words, they can't make it to the end. And it's a very long time to the end. It took, it took, it's taken me, I'm near the end, but I still have a lot further to go. It's taken me two years. So, you know, how you play something often does matter. But the thing is, being the best is not necessarily being the fastest or, 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 or doing things in a manner that... Oh, or doing things in a manner that uh, is in many ways reckless. 
strategy is about surviving the longest. And if we don't want to face extinction, then that's the way we need to think. And this is sort of the same thing here, is that your, the direction is not now, is no longer one of what the government's going to do. It's, a, it's an issue of what are we going to do. This has come down now to an individual choice of how are you going to live your life strategically enough that you can survive through these various different issues. summer. As the end of July approaches, it is the 26th of July, about uh, 21 hours and 30 minutes into the day. And we can see now that the uh, sun is below the horizon. We're beginning to drive in darkness once again, so we're going to see a change in, <laughs> in uh, length of day. At some point in time, of course, in October, we'll be. Riding in pitch blackness. Anyways. talking on the way in here, on the way in, about the de-evolution of humanism. Humanism is, starts at a high point and ends up very, very low, um, actually towards its own self, in its own self-destruction. pushing until they are destroyed. And you sort of see this sort of thing in causing real division within the church. And so what happens is that the liberals yell and scream, and these are the petulant children who always yell and scream, yet they're the ones fully involved in it. And to shut everybody up, the parents will yell and scream at the at everyone. At everyone Sort of shut up and no one's not saying anything. And then what will happen is that the liberals will continue to yell and scream. Mm 
and this is what's happened. We got uh, there were these issues over COVID and what's going on with with uh, the CBD, should say CBD. And uh, the priest said, "Okay, everyone, stop fighting over things." And you know, and the uh, people on the uh, sort of well, the right side of things, the, the, uh, the political political right side of things, they shut up. They listen. They they listen to what they were told to do, and the left kept going. Kept yelling, kept screaming, kept pushing. Because now they had the ability to shut everybody else up. When they shut up, they took a step forward. And this is what happens. Is that, this is what Lionel doesn't understand. And there's nothing you can say to these people that will stop them. And so what happens is that as people gain more and more generic, or simply were told to shut up because you don't want to cause any problems, the left keep going. They keep taking more and more and more. The problem is, they're destroying their environment. Disney. Disney stores are leaving Canada. Uh, I can't remember who else is leaving Canada as well. Well, Licks Burgers, one of the major food chains, is shutting down. Uh, a lot of restaurants and a lot of stores are shutting down in Toronto and across the rest of Canada. Canada is going to be going out of business. And it throws a lot of people who would get these these nice minimum wages, right? Because remember they're lying screaming about we need a living wage, we have to raise the minimum wage. Well, a majority of those people now are not gonna have a job at all. Not only they're not gonna have a living wage, they're gonna have no wage, zero. I mean, and, and as food prices increase, the guys say, you know, we gotta protect the environment, save the environment so you increase the cost of food by uh, making your, your, your fuel, your transportation costs, costs go up, right, because it's taxed. That's passed on to the consumer in the food store, in the food prices, and a person with no income at all can't afford that raise, and so now, now they're going out to food banks. So the number of people who, who are going to food banks is increasing. And of course, they go, oh, yes, yes, the poverty is increasing. Yeah, it's because you raised the taxes. If you didn't raise the taxes, the food prices would have gone up. And the thing is, the yelling and screaming doesn't come from the majority of the people. Because what happens is just like, like, uh, the, like the, uh, the so called. BLM. They don't represent even the Aboriginals. Now, they're not. No one represents. They're not actually representative. The chiefs aren't representative of the general population. They've been paid off, bought off, and you know they are representing a specific interest within the within the political left, and that's simply destroying everything and anything they can get their hands on. Of course, they're getting paid off to do this. They're not doing it for out uh, of the kindness of or because they are love their people. They're doing it because they're being paid off. And the thing is, is that this is how the Chinese are going to end up taking over. Well, the time it comes to 2024, there's not going to be anything left to the West. They're going at such a breakneck speed that their stores, stores in the United States are going to start shutting down. They're already short sta uh, short staff. They're already uh, uh, short supplies of everything. Now they're talking about the Delta variant, which is really non-existent. It's just a lot of more, a lot more fluff. It's, 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 it, but the thing is, is again, you have the people who were typically the screamers, the yellers, yelling and screaming again. 
and there are people who will appease them and say yes to so shut them up. But once you've done that, you've given in, and the number of people who will sit there physically and actually oppose them on the right are few and far between. But what is happening, and this is what happened in the 80s, There are these, these are cycles that, 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 that routinely repeat themselves. In the 1980s, this is where you have people like Chuck Norris and uh, 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 a number of these sort of like, uh, what's his name, what's his name again? Uh, Dirty Harry, I can't remember who, who it was. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Clint Eastwood. This is where he made his bread and butter uh, playing these vigilantes. Uh, when the police kind of fell apart in the uh, uh, late 70s and the, in, into the early 80s, and you had the, the nihilists who were these lovey-dovey people uh, in the summer of love now became these drug addicts, and they were committing crimes all over the place. They were, you know, rape and you know, murder and so on and so forth. And Dukakis decided to furlough everybody, give them a weekend pass because they're misunderstood, and, you know, the drug addicts, they can't help what they're doing. And so they continued, they were given a pass to do whatever they want, just like, like you see right now with BLM. You know, you know there's a black person there, they can walk into the store, they can, they can rob, they can steal, they can do anything they want, as long as uh, uh, it's under a thousand dollars, but they can, they can, even who's going who's gonna to judge what's a thousand dollars. Anyways, you watch them, they'll drive up, a group of people will get out of a car, and they're all black. Now I'm pointing this out because this is, is not missed. See, insur the insurance adjusters, and anyone who has dealt with insurance understands the insurance adjusters. They're there to determine where they can actually start reducing the actual payout to the insurance. And so they'll count everything that causes a problem in terms of insurance. So you see a bunch of black people getting out of a car, going into a store, store, and robbing, uh, what's it, robbing the store, you know, going and shoplifting, stealing as much as they can, you know, grabbing as much as they can care, then walking back out again to the car, and then driving off, and then you have to see, see this being done repeatedly. Well, guess what's going to happen? The black businesses, anyone's a black woman who moves into a particular area, like a white neighborhood, so even a so-called white neighborhood, what's going to happen? The insurance costs are going to go up. Simply because they're black. You go into a neighborhood that has bad, drive, uh, bad driving habits, their accident rates are up in that particular neighborhood, and you have a car in that neighborhood, guess what's, uh, guess what happens? Your, your car insurance rate goes up. And this makes it difficult for black business owners to actually set up and start a business because you can't lease a place, you can't get your lease to a rental store or whatever without insurance. And if the insurance will not insure you because you're black, because you're a too high level of a risk, and it's not because you did anything, it's because this is, what they, this is what's been sort of calculated as the risk, and there's enough video floating around to show this, guess what? You're not going to have black businesses anymore. And this is what Yvette Carnell was talking about. How black used to have a good, but then when the insurance, insurance came in, it came in, started assessing things, the system took it away.